Uh, so cosplay is a form of dress up. You can either dress up as real characters, fictional characters, just anything you want to either, really. Some people prefer to buy their costumes, some people prefer to make their costumes. And then it doesn't just stop on the costume itself, you've got all the accessories and wigs and everything else that you might want to use. I've always loved to make costumes and I've always loved doing art. And for some reason I've just gravitated more towards creating art on myself than doing it on like a piece of paper. I find this a lot more rewarding, especially since I kind of taught myself it. So I'm kind of learning as I go along. So far, I have cosplayed as Merida from Brave. I've cosplayed as Papyrus from Undertale. I have cosplayed as Tinkerbell. Around the same time, I cosplayed as Coraline. I cosplayed as Morticia Adams, Velma from Scooby-Doo, Max from Life is Strange, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And I've also had a failed attempt at Bouzette. And I'm currently still making Princess uh, San from Princess Mononoke. And my current cos plans include Mary Poppins, uh, Oogie Boogie from Nightmare Before Christmas, and Veronica from Heathers. So recently, uh, I did a photo shoot just to promote my Instagram and uh, get a lot of my cosplays out there because I didn't have a lot of professional uh, photographs of my cosplays. Uh, the first one I did was uh, Max from Life is Strange. I did this about two years ago, I think. And I wore this to EGX, um, which is a gaming convention, so I had to have a character from a game. So Life is Strange is an indie game. The main character is someone who can time travel, which gives me quite a lot of opportunities when I'm wearing this cosplay. But when I take photos, I can edit it and make it all wavy and time travelly. And just generally, I just I like the aesthetic of the game. So that's why I was I was drawn to Max, and I can kind of relate to her in ways, but not so much the time travelling part. So Coraline, here we have a boot from Coraline. This was the same year that I did Tinkerbell. So Coraline has gone through a few versions. Uh, currently I'm on version three. To make up the whole cosplay, I've got this, I've got the raincoat, I've got a jumper, I've got the wig. It gets very hot, so I don't wear it very often to conventions. And if I do, it's not for a very long time. Coraline was one of my favorite movies when I was younger. Uh, it really got me into a lot of art, it actually got me into stop motion, and I think it has led me towards the degree that I'm on, which is media studies. Um, so it really is a character that means quite a lot to me, which is why it's a shame that I can't wear it very much, otherwise I do mount. Velma might actually be one of my favourite cosplays. Um, it, she's so reliable, it's just one I can chuck in a bag and just take to a convention and just wear and have a great time. The first time I actually wore Velma, I actually met the voice of Scooby-Doo, Mark Silk, and he held this magnifying glass. It was a great time. I loved it. And yeah, it's just a generally like fun cosplay that I like to wear. I can relate to Velma a lot in her nerdy ways. And it's also the only cosplay that I wear where I can actually see, because I can wear my glasses, which is great. So, Roger Rabbit has a very big backstory behind it. Originally, Roger Rabbit's cosplay was meant to be Bouzette. That didn't happen because of time restraints and just fabric and it just wasn't happening. So Roger Rabbit was made in about a week if we're including Bouzette time. In that week I managed to make a whole bodice, dungarees, petticoat, uh, ears, and I actually made these which were my first pair of gloves the night before I was meant to get on the train for the convention. Uh, so you can tell that that was a completely stress-free cosplay construction. It was a really fun character to wear actually. It was, it was really rewarding on the day of the convention. I got recognised a lot more than I thought I would because I felt like Who Framed Roger Rabbit was quite a niche thing, but apparently it's not. But yeah, it was, really, it was a really fun and a really comfy cosplay to wear all day. My cosplays can take anything from like a week if I'm really pushing it to, I mean, I'm still working on Morticia and I still keep updating Coraline, so that's like, we're talking years, but generally it's between like a week and a couple months. But money-wise, I didn't, it was Morticia that made me start budgeting. Up until Morticia, I'd never budgeted a cosplay really, which was a big mistake. <laughs> 
So Morticia taught me how to budget for cosplays and generally I try to aim between my roof generally is about £30. Sometimes that goes higher, but if we ask my mum, that's not what I spend my money on. Yeah, I generally don't try to go higher. I dread to think how much Morticia costed me because I was learning so much just on the fly and I wasted so much money just on fabric that I just couldn't use. So it is quite an expensive hobby, but I do try to limit myself to one or two cosplays a year, maybe even a third one if it's not fully handmade. But I have found that handmade cosplays cost a lot less than buying different parts of cosplays because you're just paying for the fabric and you can get exactly what you want and how you want it to look so I personally prefer to hand make my costumes because of the money but if you can afford it like I don't blame people for buying cosplays just straight out and just not making them my friends and family like, especially my family, are pretty, they're pretty supportive of what I do. They've always thought that, you know, I was a bit bloody weird and just very creative. So it wasn't really a surprise to them when I suddenly came home to my mum and I was like, look at what I've made and it's just a full dress, it's a full Morticia dress. Quite often when I do makeup looks as well, I have to have the awkward trip of my bedroom to the bathroom where I wash it off. And if you, if I encounter like my family or my flatmates on my way, it's kind of like a, okay, Katie's on her usual bullshit again. So that's just generally the response I get because they're all quite supportive. It wasn't really a surprise to them that I wanted to go into this, especially after many years of Halloween and doing theatre and just having like a general interest in clothing and fashion and costumes. Everyone generally seems to be pretty supportive. Uh, when I made Tinkerbell, my grandma lent me her sewing machine so that I could actually sew. <laughs> yeah, that was basically where it all started and they just haven't really been surprised then and they're not surprised now. I mean, I would love to go into costume design. I'd love for cosplay to take me somewhere where I can do this as a career because it's something I'm really passionate about and it's something I really, really love. Whether or not that happens, I don't know. Like, I have considered going into like freelance, um, do costume design for people, do commissions, but obviously I'm waiting until I've got a higher skill level to start charging for that. I mean, generally with my hobbies, I gen I try to work out how can I make money out of this. Um, that's just who I am as a person. I'd love to still be doing cosplay in like a few years' time and like have such a high skill level that I can make a job out of it. That would just be, that would be amazing, really. Um, I don't entirely disagree that cosplay is a form of escapism. For me, it's a creative outlet. Obviously, I can't speak for other people because people do cosplay for different things. No, I find it... The idea of escapism is weird because obviously you are dressed as another person, but I could kind of counter that as on Halloween, if you are dressed as a mime, you do not think you're a mime. If you're dressed as a witch, you don't think you're a witch. Yeah, I will run around in character when I'm in cosplay, especially if I'm in like a kid's cosplay or like a kid's character in cosplay. I'll play along for them because, you know, you don't want to ruin a kid's like, you don't want to ruin the illusion for the child. But generally, I have quite a it's not quite escapism, it's more of a creative outlet for me. And I, I kind of am in character, but that's just the actress in me. That's just my theatre background. I personally believe that anyone, anyone can cosplay. It's just a really accessible thing, but I'm of the firm belief that anyone can do anything. Just some people might have to try harder than others. but. There's so many ways that you can get into cosplay. You can start by buying stuff and then build that up to sewing, or you can just stick with buying stuff alone. Like anyone can cosplay. If you can put on a wig and some clothes, not even a wig, if you can just put on something that resembles a character, you can cosplay. Anyone can cosplay.